Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. You can send us an email at customer service at lanessafarms.com, send us a text, or give us a call at the number listed below. We really appreciate you watching our video today. Thanks and welcome. If this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Today we are talking about trimming goat hooves. So let's get started. Uh, we have been getting a lot of questions about how to trim goat hooves. Uh, we have a long uh, segment on how to trim sheep hooves, but goats are a lot different. Uh, with the sheep, if you've watched our sheep video, you notice that we flip the sheep on their rear ends and kind of hug them and, and trim them that way. Goats, uh, you can't flip them on their butts like that. It just does not work. I don't recommend that you try it. The other thing you have to be cautious about is about the horns. So you're going to notice today as well that I've got my helper here that's holding the animal for me. That way I don't have to worry about getting gored in the side of the head. Um, and you're also going to notice that I'm going to kind of break the legs backwards uh, in order to do the trimming. Now, this is Harry. Harry is a smaller dappled buck and he has bad feet. Um, he has weak pasterns and he has uh, just bad growth in general with his uh, nails or on his hooves. And so uh, we just kind of keep him around the farm here, but uh, we try to keep his uh, hooves trimmed up properly so we can actually uh, keep him walking flat footed. As you can see right now, he's rocked back on his feet. If you come over here and look uh, and look at his front feet and his back feet, you can see how he's kind of rocked back and how those pasterns are kind of breaking right in this area here and it's kind of causing him to lean back. We're gonna to help to remedy this today by trimming the hooves up a little bit better. Um, very similar tools that you'll see me using today uh, that I use with the sheep. This is usually used for horses. I've got a pick end, a nice dull pick end and a brush end that I can use to get in there and clean out. Um, and I've also got my uh, hand shears here as well uh, that I'm gonna use. Be cautious with these hand shears, they're very sharp, they can cut you. And again, as we talked in the past with the sheep, I don't want you using the sharp end of the shears to pick out anything that's in the hooves. Uh, that's what this is for. This is for cleaning, this is for cutting. Uh, don't uh, do your best to not confuse the two or to use a tool in an inappropriate fashion. You can injure the animal. So when I talk about breaking the animal's leg, I don't literally mean breaking. What I mean is they've got a, a bend in the joint here, which allows me to bend it, um, allow the animal to comfortably, as comfortably as he can get up his weight situated on the other three. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pick and get down in there and this is pretty typical of what a hoof would look like. Um, just so you have an idea, you want to get in and clean this out all the way down. And in some cases, what you may find is that the hoof may actually be curved over. Um, these pieces of nail here can actually be curled over flat. And you want to make sure you get underneath them and clear them out. So I'm going to clean out as much as I can first. And then I'm gonna to move to the cutting phase. Now I'm right-handed, so I have right-handed shears. If you're left-handed, you may need to buy another pair of shears. These may not work for you. But I wanna lay the shears flat on the hoof, and I just wanna follow the contour of the hoof down to the point, and then I wanna cut it off. All right, so we've trimmed that one side of the hoof off, and already if you come down in here and you look, you can see the difference. This is the part that we've trimmed. This is the part that we haven't trimmed. That's a huge difference. And again, that's gonna allow him to sit a little more square on his pasture. So here we go again, we're gonna do the second one. As you can see, we're down pretty good. My helper is holding on tight to the animal so we don't have any issues there. And again, I just wanna get down as far as I can. I don't want to go so far down that I cause the animal to bleed that could open them up for infection, but that's pretty good there. A little bit of a soft spot there, but nothing to uh, worry too much about. Another method that you can do instead of following it down, you can actually start from the tip of the toe and cut both. It's a little bit harder to squeeze, but you can see how that opens the animal it up. can fight you, but again, that's what I do. I go down one side and I come back up the other. So again, you can watch. It makes it a little bit harder to uh, cut but and if you got to take a break take a break we just actually took a break there uh, with the camera uh, because it was he kind of got a little 
stir crazy and he was getting away from us and that's okay um if the animal starts to buck or kick you know let him go for a second see how he's starting to kick there let him go for a second let him relax let him gain his balance if he gets off center he's going to want to he or she's going to kind of want to take you for a ride but that's it so you can see nice and flat nice and flush and it really does a nice job you don't want to go any lower than that though so once i do that i'll get my tool out give him a brush get everything out of there i'm looking between his toes seeing if i've got any gunk down there stuck between his toes i can clean those out and he's looking good so that foot's done if you look here look at how much better he's sitting on that foot now and how much cleaner that looks he's got some little scabbiness here looks like he, something irritated his foot he's been chewing on it um, a little bit that's okay um, we don't worry too much about this kind of stuff what we worry about if you start losing hair all the way up the hock or they're really really chewing on it it can mean that they have mange or something like that in this case it was probably just itching him and just like people if sometimes you get a itch you may scratch it too much and he's doing the same thing all right so we've got the back feet done now we're going to come to the front feet again the the method is pretty much the same you're going to break the leg back uh, you can see how my helper is on the opposite side of the animal uh, from which I'm, I'm actually doing the trimming. Uh, again, you almost got to have a helper. You can put a halter on them and tie them to something, but I find that a helper is, is much more helpful. She can help to protect me uh, from these horns. These horns are sharp. Um, especially when I'm doing the front, he can turn his head from one side to the other and he can really get you. So not worth it. Just wait till you got a helper and do it that way. So the back legs um, are looking much better. He, he still rocks back in his pastures a little bit, but that's just an issue that he has. Um, but we're gonna be able to make a, a pretty big difference here with the front. So again, I'm gonna get my pick out and I'm gonna break his leg backwards, just like this. There you go. And he'll find his balance. So here's what we're talking about here. Uh, when I get this one cleaned out, I want you to look here and see, see how the, the hoof itself has started to curl in over. Um, like in this case, see how it's starting to curl in over? These are really, really bad. Um, he was out on pasture for a long time and we did not um, chase him down on pasture. Uh, believe it or not, folks, with him here, this is only three months. Uh, different animals that you have, you're gonna find that they grow in different ways um, and with different speeds. Uh, we have sheep that have to be trimmed every couple months. We have goats that have to be trimmed maybe once a year um, but in his case he's bad so look at that that looks just awful so i'm gonna take a lot more trimming to get this one done but again i'm gonna start at the heel work my way down back up and then on this one i'm gonna start at the end so lay it flat start at the heel and trim my way down and as i said don't worry about if you get it all in one cut um, speed will come later what i'm concerned about for you right now is just learning how to do this the right way so i'm going to take a little bit off at a time until i can get to where i need to be and then start following my way down the hoof to the point turn around and come back up probably take a little bit more off of here again going to come down the point turn around and come back up trim a little bit off of his heel here but that looks that looks pretty good I don't want to cut too much farther down because I could potentially open him up for an infection I'm gonna look in between his toes you can see how he's nice and fleshy there between his toes he has no infections if he did it you could possibly see well you can see all kinds of things between the toes um, ooh, boy that was a tough one to cut um, but yeah, if you see any pus or uh, infection between the toes, that's that's when it's a good time to call the vet. But again, you saw how I started at the point and I worked my way up. And that's just because the, I'm right-handed and these, these trimmers are made for a right-handed person. Um, and it makes it difficult to cut. You're going to find that they're going to want to cut in one direction. So if you're a right-handed person, this is probably what's going to work for you is cutting in this manner. If you're left-handed, you're probably going to want to do it the opposite way that I'm doing it. Okay, so there we are. This fleshy part here 
it'll wear down on its own. Again, we don't want to dig. Um, so there you have it. We are looking, we are looking pretty good. Okay, now I'll take my brush and I can clean them out. They tend to do better when you have the front leg up than when you have the back legs up. They can balance a little easier. Um, but yeah, he looks good, he looks healthy. And so these, these dudes here, you can trim these off. It's hard to see how far back you can trim them, so I want you to be cautious. Um, but you can, you can take the edges off of them a little. Just don't go crazy. So there you have it. Now when we look at him standing, you can see how much better, how much cleaner he's standing. He still has that issue with his weak pasterns where he's rocking back. Um, but he will, as the days progress, he'll, he'll start to walk on them a little bit better. So we're going to go to the other side and cut that. And uh, then we'll call it a day. I'll visit back with you here in a second after I get the other side cut. All right, so we've got his hooves trimmed. He's looking better. He's already starting to walk a little bit better on him. Uh, as you can see with his front pasterns, uh, he's already starting to rock forward on them a little bit. Um, but not completely. As the days progress, uh, we'll see him start to rock more forward on them. You can see how those tips are still pointing up. Um, but you, as they get used to them, they'll, they'll go back on their pasterns as they're supposed to. If you look at his back foot, you can already see a tremendous difference um, in the manner in which he's, he's standing on his foot and his front feet will follow after, after oh, about a half an hour or so. So that's it. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Uh, glad to answer your questions. Also, uh, we've got a, a brand new forum that we've put out on the website. You can get to the Able Apprentice forum through lenessafarms.com or you can simply go to www www.ableapprentice.com it's a place for you to ask as many questions as you like and get all kinds of informative answers uh, for you to like and share with your friends uh, from some of our local experts so happy new year to everyone and have a great day